In this video, I'm going to talk to you about cell division. The two types you need to know about are called mitosis and meiosis. First, we need to think about why we need new cells in the first place. Our cells are continuously lost, so we need to make new cells by cell division. The cells divide where the body needs to grow, replace worn out cells, repair damaged tissue, and for asexual reproduction, which is where you just make clones. Mitosis is when a cell divides to form two identical daughter cells. This is the most common type of cell division. It happens to every cell of our body. Now, you need to remember that our cells contain 46 chromosomes, 23 from mum and 23 from dad. In this diagram, I'm only showing one pair of chromosomes, so one from mum and one from dad. So just two chromosomes. Remember, you have 46 in every single body cell. The first thing that happens is the chromosomes have to replicate, so you end up with X-shaped chromosomes. The X-shaped chromosomes then line up along the centre of the cell, and then the arms of the chromosomes are pulled apart by what we call spindle fibres. The chromosome arms can also be called chromatids, and what you end up with are two genetically identical daughter cells, and we also call them diploid cells because they contain two copies of every chromosome just like the original parent cell did. Now we have gone through mitosis. If you pause the video, we can try to put the statements into the correct order. The first thing that happens is the cell duplicates or replicates its DNA. So now we have X-shaped chromosomes. These chromosomes line up along the center of the cell. Spindle fibers then pull the chromosome arms apart. One arm goes to one end of the cell and the other to the other and we sometimes call these arms chromatids. Membranes then form around each set of chromosomes, and then finally the cytoplasm divides, so we now have two genetically identical cells. The second type of cell division we need to talk about is called meiosis. Meiosis only happens when we make the sex cells. Now the sex cells are the sperm cells and the egg cells. Now you also need to know that these are sometimes called gametes. Now, normal cells in your body have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46, which we call the diploid number. However, gametes are special. They only have half the sex of chromosomes, so we call them haploid cells. When two gametes join during fertilisation, they form a zygote, which is a fertilised egg. Now, meiosis is only for making sex cells. One way to remember that is meiosis has an E in it and sex has an E in it. So meiosis is just making sex cells and mitosis is all the other types of cells in your body. Meiosis also results in variation, so it's very important. Now, in this diagram, just like before, we're starting with one parent cell, which is diploid, and I'm only showing you two chromosomes. First thing that happens is exactly the same as mitosis. The DNA has to copy or replicate and we end up with X-shaped chromosomes, just like before. Now, meiosis is different to mitosis because we actually have two cell divisions. In the first cell division, each of the X-shaped chromosomes separate into two separate cells. In the second cell division, the arms of those chromosomes, or the chromatids, separate, and we get one arm of the chromosome going into four different cells. So what you end up with are two cell divisions producing four gametes. So if you're female, that'll be four eggs, and if you're male, that'll be four sperm cells. Now they are haploid because they contain half the amount of genetic information than the starting cell. Now this diagram compares mitosis and meiosis. So let's start with mitosis. We've got four chromosomes here rather than two as our starting parent cell. And remember, we always have 46. We just don't draw that because it's too complicated. First thing that happens is the DNA replicates. So we end up with X-shaped chromosomes. And then the arms of those chromosomes or the chromatids are pulled apart into two cells. And we end up with two daughter cells, which are genetically identical to each other and to the original parent cells. Now they are diploid because they contain two sets of every chromosome. In meiosis, the same starting point, we have our parent cell with four chromosomes in this example, 
the DNA replicates to get X-shaped chromosomes, but we have two cell divisions. First one, the chromosomes separate, and in the second one, the chromatids, the arms separate. And we end up with four daughter cells that are haploid. If you pause the video here, you can have a go at this task, comparing mitosis and meiosis. If we start with mitosis, why does this type of cell division happen? It's to replace damaged cells, it's for growth, it's for asexual reproduction, things like bacteria and some plants. We've got one parent cell and we have one cell division and we make two daughter cells which are diploid and those two daughter cells are genetically identical to each other. In meiosis, it is just to make the sex cells, the sperm and the egg. We have one parent cell, but we have two cell divisions, and therefore we make four daughter cells. Now those four daughter cells will either be sperm cells or egg cells, and they will be haploid, meaning they contain just one copy of every chromosome. Now the daughter cells are also not genetically identical because meiosis allows for variation. When the chromosomes um, line up along the centre of the cell, the arms of the chromosomes can actually do what we call crossing over. So little sections of DNA cross over from one chromosome arm to the other chromosome arm, meaning that no sperm or no egg will ever be genetically identical. And this obviously causes variation within our population, so it's very important. I hope this video has helped you to understand the difference between mitosis and meiosis. The key, key thing is if you have an exam question about any type of cell, a skin cell or a fat cell or a muscle cell, it will be mitosis. If the exam, however, if your exam question mentions anything about sperm cells or egg cells, then the question is talking about meiosis. Thank you for listening and I hope you watch some of my other videos too.